We're going to keep the conversation going, high school sports, as we do this time every week with Mike McGarry from the Press for Atlantic City. Good morning, Mike. Hey, Sully. How are you? Didn't see you out at the Cape Atlantic League Soccer Championships. What's up with that, man? Uh, very busy <laughs> prepping for football, basically. <laughs> you know, prepping for football on Friday nights is almost a uh, almost a full time job now. But I, I do, however, want to compliment the uh, Cape Atlantic League. You know, they've done a great job with the basketball tournament over the past couple of years, and I just think extending that to other sports is just a tremendous job by the people who run the league and. You know, giving kids an opportunity to play in big games and win championships and create memories, that's really what high school sports is all about. So even though I wasn't there, you know, I, I saw the pictures of, of the mainland girls and, and uh, you know, it's, it's the look on their faces. I just think it's a great job by the league, and, and I think the league should create as many of those tournaments in every sport as possible. If it takes me the next 10 years, Mike, I'm going to turn you into a diehard soccer fan. <laughs> it might take it twice, so I'm but I'm game for anything these days. So what's going on in your life these days, man? Well, I think, you know, last night, uh, kind of uh, out at Pleasantville to watch Buna Regional play Pleasantville and really was, was another in a series of kind of low-scoring, tightly contested games between these teams the past couple of years, and Buna comes out and wins. 1913 in a game that I think really establishes Buna as a South Jersey Group One contender. And uh, you know, as I wrote uh, in the paper today, and, and you can still get it on PressOfAC.com. You know, I'm, I'm in the Pleasantville press box, and I look across the Buna sideline, and there's almost like no one there. They, they <laughs> dressed it, they dressed 24 guys, but they're 24 talented guys, and they showed it last night. Were you surprised at that result? I mean, that's really they really hadn't had a signature win up to this, to this point, and, and Pleasantville is a great team. You know, their their only loss had come to Haddonfield, um, and they typically play pretty well at home. Yeah, I think you would have to call the game a bit of a surprise, uh, only because, you know, Buna was a bit of an unknown, like you said, and they admitted it. They hadn't played a team the caliber of uh, Pleasantville. They had kind of circled this game on their calendar. You know, last season, Buna opened up with Pleasantville, and Pleasantville won in overtime, 13-7. So, you know, and this is a nice rivalry between these two schools, old Cape Atlantic League National Conference schools. So you really didn't know anything about Buna, but I was impressed. You know, I was impressed with Buna quarterback Luke Santiago. Uh, tremendous ball handling skills at the quarterback position. It was hard for you know to see who had the ball. You know, after each carry, you kind of going back and forth in the press box. Hey, who carried there? Who carried there? <laughs> you need a spotter. You didn't really know, and, and <laughs> you know, exactly. Two spotters, uh, and um, you know, and, and a really good running backs. I mean, Jaden Roberts, a nice fullback, you know, ran for ninety-one yards. Chris Dowdy at running back, Brian Spellman, Luke Santiago. That's three or four guys who can carry the ball. And, and Buna just does a great job. And then Buna just played great defense against Pleasantville, just short tackling. You know, they only gave up a couple of big plays to Pleasantville, so. You know, great job by uh, the Buna Chiefs, the team that, as I wrote today, often gets overlooked. You know, they're a Group 1 school. They're kind of out in western Atlantic County. They're the smallest school in Atlantic County, smallest public school in Atlantic County right now with a football team. And they kind of get overlooked. And as I wrote last night, there's no uh, ignoring them after last night. 7-0, and and I think squarely a Group 1 contender. Mike, we were talking, uh, Nick and I, before the show about why it's so tough to play Buna. And one of the reasons is because they go on these drives that may last 10, 12 plays, and they're just beating you up with that run game. And a lot of times they're playing teams where their best players play both ways. I mean, you're asking a guy like Muhammad Torrey to make six, seven, eight tackles on a, on a defensive stop, and then, okay, okay, now go run the ball six times. So, <laughs> like, they can wear you out pretty quick. Yeah, Exactly. That was certainly the case last night. You go to the end of that game, you know, Buna goes up 19-6. Samir Jones, you know, breaks the run, and Pleasantville scores in three or four plays to make it 19-13 with seven minutes to go. Buna gets the ball back, and, uh, you know, they just drive down the field. They don't score, but they take all but 14 seconds off the clock to clinch the victory. So that's a prime example right there. They control the tempo of the game with their running game, and like I said, they have three or four backs. You don't know who's getting the ball. I mean, I was very impressed by Buna. 
And, and you know, to be doing it with 24 kids is really just, uh, you know, unbelievable. I mean, I, I wrote, you know, a post-game huddle around uh, Coach Caputo. There might have been more cheerleaders than players. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the Buda Chiefs really did a fantastic job last night. And in a typical high school game, you might get – maybe 12, 14 possessions against Buna, you might only get seven or eight. So you really have to make them count. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, that's what happened last night. I mean, Pleasantville couldn't really, uh, you know, Pleasantville broke a couple of big plays. Keon Henry had a long run for a, a touchdown. And then the Buna defense made some big plays. Brian Spellman had two interceptions. They were able to force some turnovers. Uh, and, and that was, key, you know, that ball control combined with an opportunistic defense that, that forced some turnovers uh, really was the key to victory last night for the Chiefs. We're talking with Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City. And, Mike, looking at this uh, Independence Division, who knows what's going to happen? We still we might not find out who the division champ is until Thanksgiving. Well, yeah, and you got an opportunity for a, right a three, maybe a three-way tie there right now after last night. Uh you know, Oakcrest coming up with a with a big win last night, uh, and we're at that time where you got to start thinking playoffs. And Oakcrest needed a win to kind of boost their playoff chances, and they go to Ocean City and get one in overtime. That's a nice win for uh, you know Coach Eric Anderson and then Trey Sayers at quarterback, uh, Keon Berry with a good game last night for Oakcrest, and that's an Oakcrest team that had kind of been struggling the past couple of weeks for a signature win. Right? They they played Mainland, they lost a tough one to Mainland. Then they played Cedar Creek, big inter-district rival, and lose that one. They had kind of been looking for a, a signature win. They had lost two in a row. They were 3-1. and one. They were 3-3 three and three going into last night. They needed a signature win, and they got it last night in Ocean City. You know, a nice job by the Falcons. And that sets up a big uh, game next Friday night, Mainland at Ocean City. Mainland really controls its own destiny now. In, in both the division and the playoffs. So that's going to be a huge game for them. They're, they'll be coming off their bye week. Yeah, I mean, mainland Ocean City, you know, in any sport, you just say those two words. And, you know, <laughs> it's uh, one of the best, probably the best rivalry in the Cape Atlantic League across every sport. I mean, we have great rivalries in every sport, right? You know, you think of basketball, St. Augustine, Atlantic City, you know, uh, football, Holy Spirit, St. Joe. Uh, but, um, you know, sport for sport for sport, there's probably nothing better than mainland and Ocean City, and you'll have another one next Friday night with the division on the line and also mainland and Ocean City both needing a win to boost their playoff chances because both are kind of, you know, 16 teams are going to get in and both are kind of teams. We'll see when the uh, United Power Rankings come out tomorrow, but... uh both those teams are going to probably have to win, you know, so they can go to sleep on Saturday night feeling fairly confident they're in the playoffs when the field is announced next Sunday. Yeah, you mentioned that Mainland Ocean City rivalry, girls soccer in the championship game of the Cal tournament. These teams play, they've played three times now this year, almost 300 minutes of soccer. There's been two goals scored. <laughs> kind of kind of shows you how, how well, even mean, those and, teams are. And it also shows you what you know what makes the rivalry you know familiarity. And when you're you're familiar with teams, you know offense is tough, and 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 uh, and, and defense kind of stands out. So that's a perfect example right there. You know you, you play each other a lot. That's what builds the rivalry, and and you know each other inside and out, and that makes scoring tough, and that makes the games tough, and and uh, you know all that adds up to you. Know, I think. Sport for sport for sport is probably the best rivalry in the Cape Atlantic League by far. Mike, some pretty interesting games last night in terms of football. Uh, Millville won- wins its fifth in a row. Uh, St. Augustine Prep, I believe, has four in a row now or five in a row, something like that. Uh, so those teams are, are both pretty hot. St. Joe with a, with a nice bounce back win after really that, that tough week last week. So they get a, um, a 33-14 win over Timber Creek. St. Augusta beats Cherokee, which may make the playoffs at 0-7 right now. <laughs> That's another thing we need to get into. <laughs> but uh, what, what was your impression of last night? Uh, anything out of the ordinary, or did, did you expect these kind of results? Well, uh, my biggest takeaway from last night is something we touched on. Uh, we have a, a new feature on our website, Saturday morning look at, at Friday Night Football Heroes. It's just kind of what Holy Spirit and St. Joe and St. Augustine did. I mean, the rest of South Jersey kind of uh, – used to laugh or not laugh but kind of wonder 
when Cape Atlantic League coaches complained about how tough it was to play those three schools, they kind of, you know, the rest of the coaches from, you know, the Cherry Hill side of the state would say, hey, they're not that good, or how tough can it be or something. Well, since you've gone to the West Jersey Football League, you're finding out. Holy Spirit, Elijah Gray last night, three touchdowns, throws a touchdown pass. Holy Spirit clinches the Royal Division. Since they've gone to the West Jersey Football League, Holy Spirit has not lost a division game, okay? Wow. St. Joe, you know, wow. Jaden Chertel goes, uh, throws three touchdown passes last night, entered the season with just one, or entered the game with just one all season. He throws three. Chase Lomax, uh, another sophomore, intercepts the pass, returns it for a touchdown, catches a touchdown pass. St. Joe clinches the Continental Division. And then you look at uh, St. Augustine, Freshman running back Nasir Hill from Mays Landing runs for over 160 yards. They go beat Cherokee. Like you said, I think that's four in a row. They're 5-2 they're and two or 6-2 and two now and, and setting up a game with Williamstown next Friday night for the American Division title. So there you have the three kind of Cape Atlantic League parochial powers kind of flexing their muscles last night, two of them winning division titles, and St. Augustine putting themselves in position to win one. In, in a game against Williamstown next Friday night, which will be, you know, one of the biggest games in the state next weekend. Mike, best running back in South Jersey is it Isaiah Rakes? Uh, well, <laughs> inside the box, might be. You know, he scored again last night, two hundred ninety-five pound Isaiah Rakes. As he said after a bowl of spaghetti, three oh three after his state, uh, he was able to get another touchdown last night, and uh, St. Augustine with a really on an impressive streak right now. They're, they're mixing in the running of Nasir Hill, putting Isaiah Rakes uh, in around the goal line, and, and really Chris Allen has kind of uh, gotten better. The quarterback has gotten better every week. He's been able to complement that running attack with timely passes, and that's what's really allowed St. Augustus to sort of take off on this winning streak and, and uh, you know, rebound nicely from that one and two start to start the season. Now, Mike, before we let you go, I know you uh, you follow cross country pretty closely as well. Give us a dark horse for next week's Cal Championships. You know, uh, you look at the uh, the results of of the county races. I think what on the girls' side, I think you've got to look at Raylan Miller of, of Millville High School with what she's done out there, winning that Cumberland County Championship again. Uh, she's just had a uh, spectacular sort of career. Obviously, Olivia Schaefer of EHT ran a great race to win the Atlantic County Championship. And over on the uh, boys' side, I think you, you still have to look at Mainland Regional. Kevin Ansick has kind of had a, you know, a really, really good season. You know, he's performed well in each of the major meets so far this season, including uh, the Atlantic County Championship, winning that on uh, Thursday. So I think he would be, you know, kind of a runner to look at Thursday. Uh, this uh, Thursday coming up for the Cape Atlantic League Championships. Good stuff, as always, Mike. I know you probably got to get to your seventh grade basketball practice, right? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> That'll start up soon. We still got uh, about another week, and, uh, another week, uh, and we'll be ready to go with that. All right, man. I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. All right, Sully. Anytime. Thanks for having me on. Talk to you guys next week.